appointment to meet the dad. You know, I'm that kind of person. My wife always complains about the fact that when I think about the thing I do it now, I don't, I have no time for appointments. So I walked into this office. I didn't bring the book with me. I just walked in. And I met a gentleman on the fourth floor. I told him I would like to see Ahmed Didat. And he said, um, <clears throat> do you have an appointment? I said, no. He said, no, you can't see me that without an appointment. I said, no, but I must see him. He said, no, but you don't have an appointment. I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to see Mr. Didat. And uh, the man saw that this man is problem. <laughs> and he took the phone and phoned the dad and said, there's this man, he insists that he wants to see him. And he said, send him in, you know, without a problem. Send him in. So I went to see this man, did that. I found this man, tiny man, sitting on that other side of the, of the big chair, the big desk. I, I looked at him as I walked in, and I didn't believe this is the, right, the man that I was coming to see. And he stood up and, sh and shook my head, my hand, offered me a seat. Then I started asking him questions about this. He amazed me. He amazed me. He answered all my, you know, I thought I had bombshells for him. He answered all my questions as easy, you know, as I asked them. And what is worse, he was not gentle with me. <laughs> he was not gentle with me at all. He was swearing with me. <laughs> And I enjoyed the sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I, he asked me, he answered all my questions and I felt, well, I'm satisfied for the time being, but I still don't believe that Christ did not die on the cross. Um, I must still read some more. So he gave me some of these books, these little booklets. I went home and read these booklets. I came here over and over with different questions. At one time he gave me the Quran. He said, can you read the Quran? I said, I'll, I'll read the Quran. So he gave me the Quran. I went home to read the Quran. And as I was reading the Quran, I said, man, look at this. Just look at this. I'm going to catch this man. Because he tells me that there is only one God. And you know when you read the Quran, Allah said, we did this, we did this. Why, how can this man say there's only one God? I'm, I'll, I'll get him. Then I came here. I said to him, look, you may tell me that God is one, but I've been reading your Quran. In case you have, noticed, you have not noticed that God speaks in the plural, why does he say we? He says we, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We. And he laughed. He laughed. He said, you, look, you don't know these things. You see, in the, I think he said, Eastern language or something like that. He said, there's a plural of numbers and a plural of respect. He said, have you not heard the queen when he speaks? He says, we, we, all the time. You heard Margaret Tasha? He says, she says, we, we all, why do you think they say, wow. He caught the wind of my sails. <laughs> and um, I went out. I was now becoming a bit soft when coming to see him. <laughs> I had learned that this man has all the answers. So, in the year, I think 1994, I think it was, I thought, well, this is a good religion. I, I now seem to believe that there is one God, but perhaps I'll have problems with this religion. They fast the whole month. You know, once I came and did that was fasting, and he offered me tea and biscuits, I said, what about you? He said, no, I'm fasting. So I said before this man had his tea and biscuits, he didn't have anything. So I thought, if I become a Muslim now, am I going to fast? We never fasted. You know, we, we say Easter, it's fasting time. You know how we fast? The priest will tell you on the pulpit that, look, 
it's time for fasting now. Uh, you must now, from now, stop eating all the nice things that you like. If you feel like buying meat, take the, meat, the money that you are going to buy meat with, put it in the box, bring it to God. <laughs> Children, all sweets, don't buy sweets. Take all the money, bring it to God. That is your fasting. Now these people, I, I see people really fasting, going without food. So in 1994, in the month of Ramadan, I thought, let me fast with these people. If I falter on the way, I'm not a Muslim, I'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I fasted. I was not a Muslim. I went on my fast from the day the Muslims started. I went on my fast. I found I was enjoying it. I, I was saying my prayers in Zulu. I uh, had been given that little booklet, Muslim at Prayer. And I was translating all this into Zulu. And I was saying my, my prayers in Zulu. I was fasting. And um, I went through the Ramadan. I enjoyed it. And then I said, well, now I'm becoming a Muslim. But I could not, um, <clears throat> I could not just walk out from my church and become a Muslim. I was chairman for the whole Diocese of Marian Hill. The Diocese of Marian Hill is a very big area. Natal has four dioceses. There's a diocese of Amzimkulu, diocese of Marian Hill, the archdiocese of Deben, and the diocese of Zululand. So I was in charge of about a quarter of Natal. So I could not just walk out and become a Muslim. I was a member of the Marian Hill Mission Board and they relied on me. So <clears throat> I called a meeting, committee meeting of, my, of the diocese, and I was armed with this book in my pocket. <laughs> I, the bishop of Marian Hill, Bishop Ngoma, used to attend my meetings. So he was at the meeting. And um, after the meeting, I said to him, my Lord, I would like to talk to you. We address them as Lord. So I said, my Lord, I would like to talk to you. And uh, <clears throat> he did not know what I was going to talk about. He thought I was going to talk about uh, missionary work or something like that. When, when we went outside, I did not wait for us to go to his office. As soon as we got out of the hall, I said to him, my Lord, I have a problem. He said, yes, what's your problem? I said, <clears throat> I no longer believe that God is a trinity. He nearly collapsed. He said, what? I said, I no longer believe. He said, what? What has happened to you? I said to him, take this book. Go and read this book. And then come and sit down with me and discuss this book. He said, where do you get this book? Throw this book in the rubbish bin. I said, no, my Lord, I have read this book. I want you to read it. Because you cannot convince me without going through this book. It is now your opportunity as my spiritual leader to convince me otherwise. I said, take this book and read it. You cannot convince, convince me otherwise. He took the book. But I could see in his face that he was not going to read it. But he took it with him. I gave him three months. And in three months, he didn't come back to me. I noticed that he was no longer attending my meetings. And the members of my committee did not know what was the problem. And I did not say anything to them. Everybody noticed the bishop was not coming to the meeting. Only I knew why he was not coming. So after three months, after the meeting, 
I told my committee, look, I spoke to the bishop three months ago, telling the bishop that I'm going to become a Muslim unless he convinces me otherwise. I showed them the book. I said, this is the book that I gave to the bishop and he has not come back to me. Therefore, I want to tell you that I'm resigning now because I'm becoming a Muslim. He said, no, 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 you can't do that. Give us time, let us talk to the bishop. I said, okay, talk to the bishop. So they went and spoke to the bishop after two weeks. Um, they told me that uh, they've spoken to the bishop and the bishop says he thought I was joking. Can I joke about a thing like this? <laughs> he said I was joking. And I said, okay, if he thought I was joking, where is he? Now he knows I'm not joking. Where is he? And they said, no, the bishop said uh, he cannot talk to you. But uh, he said we should arrange with one of the, of the priests to talk to you. And we have arranged with one Father Tongabe who has agreed to talk to you. If you phone Father Tongabe and make an appointment, he will talk to you. I telephoned Father Tongabe there and there. You see, brothers and, brothers and sisters, when you become a Muslim, from a Christian background, your Islam is not like the Islam of a born Muslim. It is different. Because when I come to Islam, I come with a knowledge of the other um, religion. And I find a religion that is wonderful. Muslims do not know, born Muslims, they do not know what wonderful religion they have. So I was very eager, very anxious to meet with this Father Tungabe. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, at that stage, I was ready to, to, to face the Pope. I could face the Pope. So I went to this Father Tungabe on a Saturday morning. I met Father Tungabe at 10 to 9. Our appointment was on 9 o'clock. And I knocked at his office at 10 to 9. <clears throat> when I came, Father Tongabe was sitting on a huge desk and he had three different Bibles open at different places. And he had a fourth book which they used to interpret the Bible also open. And as I walked in, Father Tongabe greeted me, shook my hand, and said to me, before we start our conversation, we must agree on something. <clears throat> I said to Father Tongabe, well, it depends on what, what you're talking about. What are we going to agree on? And he said, we must agree that we as Christians believe in the Bible as the word of God, and we also believe in the doctrine of the church. And then I asked him, what do you mean by that? Is the doctrine of the church different from what the Bible teaches? He said, yes, the doctrine of the church is different sometimes from what the Bible says. I said, give me an example. What example can you give me? And he said, the theory that um, God is a trinity is not in the Bible. I was hearing this for the first time. I didn't know that. I said, is it not in the Bible? He said, no. You can open the Bible from beginning to end. You won't find that God is a trinity. I said, but where do you get it from? You know, I was, I was shocked because all the time I thought it was in the Bible. Where do you get it from? He said, I've just told you, it is the doctrine of the church. We believe it as, as it is taught by the church. I said, but where does the church get it from? Said, no, we don't ask that question. That is why I said to you, we believe in the, in, the, in the Bible, and we believe also in the doctrine of the church. We don't ask where the church gets it from. I said, Father, 
you are admitting defeat before we even start. <laughs> because I've, I've come here to tell you God is not a trinity. How are you going to support your statement? If you insist that God is a trinity, you have to support your statement. How are you going to accept it, to, to support your statement? And the priest quickly said, I, I spoke in this fashion with you when you came so that if you do not believe in these two things, it is useless for us to meet and talk because I'm going to insist that God is a trinity and you will say God is not a trinity. And I said, I will support my statement. How are you going to support your statement? I will support my statement. How are you going to support your statement? He said, how can you support the statement that God is not a trinity? I said, for instance, Christ was not crucified. Christ did not die on the cross. And then our discussion drifted from Trinity and we started talking about um, crucifixion. I had read this book. I was quoting from this book without looking at it. I, at the end, I was talking and Father Tungabe was listening. At half past one, from half past nine, from ten to nine, at half past one, I parted with Father Tungabe and he said to me, Mr. Ngwane, I've learned a lot from you. I hope we sit again sometime and talk. I was hoping that one day I'll sit with Father Tongabe again and talk to him. I went away to do some more reading because I thought um, this is a man who for the first time has said that Christ was not crucified like me, but as a priest, he's trying to swallow it up as if, you know, as if he has had nothing. When he shook my hand and said, I've learned a lot from you, I knew that he was curious about what I was telling, telling him. Unfortunately, he was killed before we met for the second time. Now, after this, I uh, then went, went back home. I am a man with eight children, and um, all of them are married. They are at different places. I thought to myself, it is not going to be fair for me to become a Muslim and leaving my children alone. So I went to each and every one of my children, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Olundi, all over where they are. I went and sat with them. <clears throat> and I told them, look here, I brought you up as Christians and as Catholics. At the time when I brought you up, I sincerely believed that Christianity was the only religion but now I have discovered that I was wrong. I told them there is only one God. I told him Christ was not down the cross. I was supporting my statements as I spoke to him, to them. But um, <clears throat> of my eight children, only one became a Muslim. Um, the youngest, the youngest of them all, became a Muslim. He's not a baby, don't think it's because he, <laughs> he's, he's also married and he has three children. He was 27 at the time when he became a Muslim. And I'm still making dua to Allah Ta'ala to make them see, but it seems they are far away. When I talk to them, they are far away. Some of them dislike Islam so much that they confront me and say, Daddy, how can you follow an Indian religion? How can you follow? In? You know, you try to tell them this is not an Indian religion. You try to reason. They just will not take it. But um, I make dua that um, Allah make them see the... Inshallah. Inshallah. We all make dua. 
Inshallah. Brothers and sisters, that is the story of my reversion to Islam. I hope that this little story will make each and every one of you realize the importance perhaps <clears throat> of reaching out to the indigenous people of this country because we all know that Muslims have been in this country for over 300 years and we all know that Muslims have kept to themselves for 300 years we couldn't know what they are doing we used to see Muslims um, go to mosque and um, live in closing their shops and going to mosque and we used to say oh they pray for money that is why they are so rich they, they would close their shops and go and pray for money and when they come back we flock into their shops <laughs> Look, but this was no fault of ours. It was the fault of the Muslim. Because when they came to this country, they said, and were satisfied that they are Muslims, they said nothing to the African people. They let us shout there with white clothes, uh, running like this, hallelujah, amen. And they, they were watching. They were not doing anything about it. They knew, they knew, the Muslims, that what we were doing, we were doing was not right. But they were not telling us. They were not telling us. Now, I think the time has come for the Muslims to stand up and support us. The few Africans who have embraced Islam and are doing their best to invite their other African brothers to this deal. I think it is the duty of the old Muslims to support us in all this. Jazakallah. You mentioned the issue about your children. Did you see our sister Leila here? How did you communicate with her? Thank you, brother. <coughs> you see, um, this is another story. <laughs> you see, at the time of my reversion to Islam, I was having a problem with my wife and we were living, we were separated and I was living with Leila, we were not married, in the Christian world it's, it's not, it's, that's nothing, you can take any woman and sit with her and it's, it's acceptable. So I was living with Leila, when I accepted Islam. Something happened in my life. I told Leila that I was accepting Islam. And I said to her, when I accept Islam, we are going to get married or you are going to move out. I said to her, I cannot live with you as a Muslim. This was before I, you know, I had read and I was so convinced, I was so full that I was ready to sacrifice her. I said to her, you become a Muslim, I cannot force you, but if you don't want to become a Muslim, I can't marry you either. If you don't want to, to become a Muslim, then sister, let us part. And I tell you that <clears throat> Leila could not believe what she was hearing because she was very much in love with me. I was very much in love with her, but I knew, I knew in my own heart that I was going to sacrifice her. <clears throat> so um, I used to come and preach to her we lived in the same house, but we no longer shared the bed with her. And I used to come and preach to her. And she was a member of the UCC church. On Sunday, she used to get ready and go to church. 
And when she comes back, she would tell me what the, the, the priest was saying, and we would then start arguing again. And she disliked it at so much. <laughs> you know, she said, you stand when this man is swearing you like this, and you look at him. <laughs> so one day, I was showing one of Didat's um, tapes, videos, it was Jimmy Swaggart and Didat. <coughs> she looked at this tape, and this was not the first time, you know, for her to see this, but on this particular day, I don't know what clicked in her. Something clicked in her. And she said, I can't believe it. This man, this Christian man, this, he fails to answer the dad. He said, I can't believe it. Then she became a Muslim. <laughs> we came here uh, together <clears throat> for her to embrace Islam and for us to, to be uh, married, Nika, here, this building. So she embarked the Islam here, she, we got married here. No. No. I'd like to suggest we can, the picture what you gave, sir, would you have it in Zulu for us? Because I do party this dawah work in Sintere, which I do on Friday. Alhamdulillah, I have three or four who are to Islam. And last week, uh, I had a guy, we were arguing, about you didn't get the spirit in you yet, you didn't get the spirit. I say spirit or metal the spirit, I'm not talking about spirit. I'm talking about God Almighty Allah. I say your trinity. I say it's a direct swearing to Almighty Allah. You are swearing God. For instance, you say Trinity, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Right? The three are one, they cannot be parted. For the very witness in heaven, they are one. But whether you call it God, whether you call it Jesus, whether you call it the Holy Spirit, it is one. Rest in Zulu, you say, Moi is Moi like Velila Maria. I said, tell me what does it mean? He said, oh, you can't understand. I said, why I don't understand? You came out of the bus? What is this now? <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I tell you, look, first of all, is God Almighty. And He went to who? The loved one of Joseph Carpenter. When did God get mad? He didn't say, I'm going to go to Shatira Maria. He said, I'm going to go to Shatira Maria. <laughs> so anyway, then I said, two is left. Then the Moya Zimwele Kibelina Maria. Okay? They went together and he did the, uh, adultery. Because first is illegitimate, without marriage. Second is adultery. The third is Jesus himself now. I said, now, Jesus being the third personality with God, and he also does this, being Trinity and Kibeli La Maria, that is incest. I said, please. I said, tell me now, if I swear you now, you think I can steal and sell here? He says, Ulala, I said, now, when you die tomorrow, I said, what answer are you going to Where are you going to run? And Alhamdulillah, I gave the Quran to Mwala. I said, he's arguing with me. He said, no, he didn't get the spirit yet. I said, I don't need the spirit. I said, read this book. <coughs> I said, read Azuba, Jesu Agu Bacero, not crucified. I said, tattoo. I said, that also is uh, saying it's not Trinity and so on. So I took the book. I said, I'll see you next week. I said, I'm here, sir. Anytime you want. We have a special spot where I sell. And Alhamdulillah, like that, this one chap, I went to, I, I don't think you should talk to him long. Anyway, Alhamdulillah, I got a chap who went to Islam. He's a Zulu medicine. He sells a Zulu medicine in Sitebe. And uh, three weeks ago, I was going to Cape Town for a funeral. So somebody from an African phone came up and speak to him in Zulu and tells him, you are taking Allah's name and selling the medicine. He said, yes. He says, with Allah's name, are you curious? People say, yeah. He says, you know, it was a bacha, it was a trupula right now. I will shoot you. He turned around and says, look, who was speaking? He says, no, don't ask me that. But I do like, he says, look, I'm happy if you do bula me. Allah wants me earlier, I'm prepared to go. Allahu Akbar, he says, I'm prepared to go, come and kill me. But I will live in Islam and die in Islam. I have a story, I'll show you later on. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> what I want to say is this, that uh, I want to say that this, that um, when I spoke about um, about showing the difference, which is very important to show them the difference, you have got to know, you have got to know the, the Bible, for instance, because unless you are quoting from the Bible and, and, and showing them the difference from the Bible, 
you can you can never convince them by, by just saying you know you've got to to know you've got to know you can't do it unless you know you've got to know thank you